The partition of the Indian subcontinent into West and East Pakistan left a considerable impact on the whole of South Asia, the repercussions of which are still visible in its politics and societal attitudes. The partition of Bengal into West Bengal and East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, saw an unprecedented eruption of large-scale communal violence and migration. While plenty has been written and talked about surrounding the partition of Bengal, there is however a dearth of work done by scholars on the effects of partition on the lives of women or refugees in general. So in this feminist archive video, we take a look. The communal violence in the Bengal region started in October November 1946 with the Noakhali riots and the women had to bear the brunt of becoming victims of rape, abduction, forced conversion and marriage. Some women were deserted by their families on account of being pregnant as a result of the sexual violence that they faced. Women's bodies became sites of war, conflict and violence. Post the partition, a big roadblock that arose was that of rehabilitation. With the continuous influx of people from East Bengal, even after decades of partition, the West Bengal government came under increasing pressure from the Indian central government to round up the rehabilitation ministry to discourage further migrations. However, the process was not carried out considering the conditions and needs of the refugees themselves, resulting in a half-hearted attempt at their rehabilitation. After discussions, it was decided that the migrants would be divided into three groups. The first category consisted of migration occurring between October 1946 and March 1958, which was termed old migration, with the migrants being eligible for government roles and rehabilitation. while more than half of them didn't receive any assistance the second category consisted of migrations between april 1958 and december 1963 with the migrants being called in between migrants these migrants were not given any rehabilitation or financial assistance by the government the last category was that of new migrants comprising of people migrating from 1963 to the 1970s they were eligible for rehabilitation only if they sought occupation outside the state of west bengal while those who stayed became ineligible these policies highlight the problematic attitude of the government towards the refugees who the government felt were mostly motivated by financial incentives ignoring their plight Ashoka Gupta one of the social workers working for the rehabilitation of refugees went to the Punjab camps in 1955 and pointed out the neglect that the women were facing in the Bengal camps she submitted a report to the government according to which there were also no separate women's homes and latrines as well as no training centers to help women become independent while earlier many women staged protests demanding better facilities eventually most accepted the camps as their permanent residence and lived on the mercy of the state the communist party of india played a significant part by spearheading many of the refugee protest movements however despite efforts and developments that were made the bias against women from east bengal persisted Refugee women from East Bengal were forced to live in completely different surroundings in a crowded city where they had to start from scratch. Add to that the fact that they were not treated at par with the women from West Bengal by the administration resulting in their further alienation. Furthermore, partition also altered the lives of women who belonged to the minority community and did not migrate. Partition was a life-changing event for many women who suffered brutalities at the hands of men as well as the state. However, what history often fails to mention is how the women successfully adapted to their difficult circumstances. It rarely mentions how the women in Bengal staged protests demanding better facilities and how so many of them entered the public sphere and earned a living to support their families. Partition memoirs and accounts by Mridula Ben Sarabhai, Kamala Ben Patel and Pushpa Ben Mehta who were managing refugee camps showcase stories of women's agency and rebuilding there were accounts of mutual counseling delivering babies and convincing family members to accept their daughters and wives among others women volunteers also made constant announcements on all india radio about individual refugees and facilitated their departures by road and rail Within the stories of violence and trials there are also these stories of women claiming their agency and of solidarity and sisterhood. While over the years a lot has been talked and written about the partition, movies have been made about the same, but most often women are depicted as passive victims of the violence rather than survivors. 
There is a need for the narrative to shift from not just the violence that was perpetrated, but also the fight and recovery that the women showcased.